بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وبعد. So this is lesson number 58 from the explanation of Balugh Maram and inshallah today we continue from Bab Adab al Qadha al Haja which is the manners of relieving oneself. So he said one Abi Qatala رضي الله عنه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم لا يمسن أحدكم ذكره بيمينه وهو يبول ولا يتمسح من الخلاء بيمينه ولا يتنفس في الإناء متفق عليه ولفظ المسلم So this hadith is in Bukhari and Muslim but this is the wording of Sahih Muslim So he said when Abi Qatada رضي الله عنه the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم said لا يمسن the لا here is a لا ناهية Nahiyah, which means it, is, it shows that this is a prohibition. It is a prohibition. And then here you have la yamasanna, and at the end you have the noon of tawqeed. Okay, the noon of tawqeed. So this shows, this uh, this is to like uh, give tawqeed or emphasis on the nahi. So la yamasanna, al mas in the Lughat al Arab, you say mas uh, shay or masastu shay. أي أفضت إليه بيدي من غير حائل. And a حائل is a hajis. It's any th- any type of partition that is between you and the thing that you're touching. So that you touch something with your hand and there's nothing between that thing that you're touching and this and your hand. So there's no partition. Okay. So this is مسستو شيء. So he said لا يمسن. So n- nobody from amongst you should touch. أحدكم ذكره. And of course ذكره it goes back to the male. Private part. ذكرهو بيمينه. So he said he should not touch his private parts with his right hand. وهو يبول in the time that he is urinating. So if he has to manage his, this 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 function during the time that he is uh, relieving himself, then he should use his left hand and he should not use his right hand. And this is a prohibition. ولا يتمسح. ولا يتمسح. So this is يتمسح. It comes from the word مسحة. And this it goes back to the meaning of the atafa'ul, which is atafa'ala, yatafa'alu, tafa'ulan, which has the meaning here of atakalluf. All right. Well, marad al istinja' biyamini. So a person should not uh, here because masaha means to wipe. All right. Atamasuh, uh, so to wipe, uh, which means this goes back to al istinja', which is the cleansing of the uh, of the najasa or the impurities. From either of the sabilain, the sabilain, it refers to the 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 front part of the body and the back part, the two areas where the uh, where you relieve yourself from. All right, where you relieve yourself from. So either one of those parts, whether it's from urine or whether it's from uh, excre- the excretion of feces, so either one of these two is uh, tamasuh. This is what it's referring to. Walayatamasuh min al khala'i. All right, min al khala'i. Now we spoke about the mean, the meaning of al khala in the previous lesson. All right, uh, and where it came from and how it became, uh, and one of the previous, maybe not the previous previous lesson, but just as a revision, al khala yutlaq al al fada, which is like it's a it's an empty empty area that you go to relieve yourself. But this is not the actual meaning here. Al khala here it refers to. Uh, the actual place where you are relieving yourself from. So obviously if you're urinating and then that, you know, uh, from the male private part or the female private part or the or if you're relieving yourself from number two, obviously, then you have that that part of the body. So whichever one, this this is now, this is the, the word khala here is talking about those two parts, which is uh, referred to as as-sabilan. As-sabilan, because sabil is a, a pathway. And of course, this is the pathway that is from the body to, for this, uh, for these impurities to leave the body. So sabilan. All right. So he said, "Well, I All right. So he said, "Min al So, so you don't hold, you don't hold your private areas with your uh, right hand when you're urinating, and you don't wipe when you're cleaning or doing istinja. Also, you do not wipe with your right hand. So both both of these actions should be done. With the left hand and the left hand only, because obviously you eat with your right hand, you give things and you take things with your right hand, and uh, you shake people, people's other people's hands with your right hand. So 
how could you shake another person's hand and you have all these this filth and impurities that you know that you're wiping with your hand and even though you know you might wash your hand with soap and all that but still stuff remains and that's the whole point you know how you know now you're putting food in your mouth with this hand billah. so and of course we understand that this is from the trace of the kufar because the kufar they, they have no they don't, I don't even think they know which hand they use to wipe with so it's just I mean yeah billah. Allah is filthy it's filthy that a person could sit there and just like wipe and clean themselves with the same hand that they eat with billah. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah for the ni'mah of Islam. Because Islam, it, t- it took the people out of this barbaric type behavior and brought them to cleanliness, to you know, to, to being proper, to being upright. So Alhamdulillah, it's a, it's a ni'mah. Islam is the greatest ni'mah on the face of this earth. Because you see the people that don't care about Islam. They don't even, look at them. They don't even care what hand they wipe with, what hand they eat with. Well, you know, a'udhu billah. So he said, uh, ولا يتمسح من الخلاء بيميني ولا يتنفس في الإناء وتنفس here it means breathe like to take in a breath and to relieve a breath and to release a breath to inhale and to exhale so this is a tanafus in the Arabic language alright and the, the word for breath is nafas nafas alright not the word nafs because the word nafs is like a soul or a self but the word nafas with a fatha on the fa this is the, the word for breath Alright, and then the second part he said, وَلَا يَتَنَفَّسْ فِي الْإِنَاءِ So الْإِنَاءِ هنا it refers to some, uh, the inā for drinking. So when, when a person is drinking, the person should not breathe into the, the vessel that he's drinking from. Because obviously this can uh, cause uh, spittle to go back into the drink, uh, maybe food that could be stuck in the teeth or something like that to, to also go into any type of filth could go back into the cup and it could cause harm for him or if somebody else comes behind him and drinks from the same cup so the, the prophet said well i get the nafas well i get the so the person should not and not breathe while he's while he's drinking instead he should breathe he should drink in breaths like uh, when he breathes in he drinks and of course this goes back to uh, the hadith of uh anas and which he said, "Anna Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam kana yata nafas the meaning that he used to drink with uh, thalathati and fast. All right, that he would uh, so he wouldn't breathe, like he wouldn't gulp and gulp and gulp and gulp the water, but he would drink a little, breathe and drink a se- second bit, and breathe. So this way he was never, uh, never breathing. Uh, he was never breathing in the, uh, you know, in the actual vessel that he's drinking from, because especially in those days." Where other people would drink behind the person. All right, so so any vessel, yes, is uh, here. Not to, you should not breathe in it. Instead, just take a sip and breath. Take a sip and then take a breath like this, and you should do that three times. So this this hadith is mutafakun ali, and like I said, this is the the wording of Muslim. All right. Uh, so of course we have different issues. So for, uh, we have the issue first off of uh of uh touching the private parts of the the male private part here is specifically mentioned so the the main question that always came up was uh in this issue is whether or not the the la because the la here is a la is a la a nahia it's la nahia so obviously it's a nahi which is a nahi is a prohibition so then you had like this iftilaf amongst the ulama so whether or not this is for like for example is it tahrim is it like haram, or is it what they what they refer to as a nahi litanzih, which means it's very 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 disliked to the point of being almost uh, prohibited. And of course, the, the you had two different opinions. So you had the opinion of uh, the zahiriya, and the zahiriya were on the opinion because this was the opinion of the ulama that any time that you have a nahi in a hadith. And then it, it's it's a prohibition unless you find something else that something from the Quran or wording of the Hadith that takes it out of this being a prohibition. So as long as you don't have that, then it remains on prohibition because that's what the La Nahiya does. And this is the opinion of the Zahariya. Then you had the Fuqaha from the different Madahib. They say no, it's for it's, uh, it's uh, the Nahiya is litanzih and it's not for like a tahrim. 
So in this, but the the, the stronger opinion, and this is the uh, the opinion of uh, Amir al-Sanani and Subul al-Salam, is that of course it remains on the actual nahi, it's a prohibition, because there's nothing that takes us, there's no evidence that we have to take this out of actually being a prohibition, and this prohibition is for all the things mentioned in the hadith. So that means uh, touching the male private part with the with the right hand, while the person is relieving oneself. Uh, wiping oneself while you know doing istinjat and breathing in the in the vessel while you know, that's used for drinking, all of these things are they fall under the guise of a prohibition. The second issue that you the people had ikhtilaf or difference of opinion in is whether or not because the Prophet ﷺ said uh, So is this only specifically for the time that a person is urinating, or is this a prohibition also for touching? The male private part with the with the right hand, even when a person is not urinating at any other time, basically any other time. And anybody that wants to actually go and uh, uh, and, and read this this masala, you can go to uh, Fath al Bari and look at what Al Hafiz ibn Hajar said in Fath al Bari in regards to this masala. But the main thing is because he was doing like he was talking about the chapter heading of Al Bukhari. Because uh, Bukhari, he put this hadith in a in a sahih under the chapter, Bab la yumsik dhakarahu bi aminihi ida bal ida bal. So uh, I will just read this, uh, the first part of Al uh, Hafiz ibn Hajj. He said, "Ashara bi hadi tarjima ila ila anna nahiya al mutlaq an masal dhakar bil yamini kama fil bab qablahu mahmul uh, mahmul al al muqayyid bi halat al bawl fi yakun ma adahu mubahin." So he's basically saying that uh, he's he's showing by using this chapter heading that the the nahi al mutlaq and mas al dhakr because you say la yum because he said la yum sik dhakrahu bi yamini this is mutlaq it means in any scenario or any hal so this is the mutlaq and mas al dhakr bil yamin kama fil bab and I and to to touch the private the male private area with the with the right hand kama fil bab like he mentioned in the chapter qablahu Mahmulun al al that is that is it's uh, that it's controlled or the the how can you say this in English like the rule the ruling goes back to the the condition and the condition idabal so this goes back to like what the Prophet sallallahu alaihi said la so this is the stipulation the condition of like touching the private area with the with the right hand is in the condition of urinating only and this is the muqayyid bihalat al bawl and he said that anything other than that is considered mubah. So if a person were, you know, to touch his private area for any other reason outside of uh, relieving himself, then it's, it's permissible to use either the right hand or the left hand. But the, this nahi, this prohibition is only for using the right hand during the time of urination as is mentioned, as is mentioned in the hadith and also as is understood from the chapter heading of, uh, chapter heading of Al-Bukhari, rahimahullah. So, inshallah, with that, inshallah, we'll wrap up this lesson because I think that's enough uh, issues for today. Uh, the next lesson, inshallah, we'll go over more manners. Uh, we'll take the next two, had, uh, the two hadiths because they're dealing with the same thing, inshallah. So, ilahuna subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Asharu wa la ilaha illa ant. Astaghfiruku wa tubu alayk.